Welcome back to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage three Tour de Suisse. Exciting stage, 182 kilometers, about 110 miles in length, and it's got some drama for us at the finish of today's stage. Main thing to look out for under 27 kilometers ago starts the last climb. There's two categorized climbs on today's stage, but the last one's the one that's going to make some excitement in today's race. Three and a half kilometers long, just over 6%. So you know at over 6% that anything's possible because we got classic guys, Matthew Vanderpool in the race. And so we know anything is possible on today's stage. Right away, break a four, get up the road. It's Ben King. Yes, you guessed it. My old teammate from Radio Shack days. He's in the break. He has yesterday's breakaway rider, M. Hoff, the Swiss rider up there. M. Hoff will get dropped first to come out. Clearly his legs are hurting from yesterday's race. Along for company is the Kofidis rider, Remy, who does a great job of staying out there the longest and attacking on the last climb, but he will get caught get caught and brought back at the top of the last climb with just about 20, 22 kilometers to go. Mateus Frank is the fourth rider up there. He's a Swiss rider, so these are home roads for him. Now, back in the group. Wasn't too exciting for, for us until about 42 kilometers to go. There was a crash, and then right after that, a second crash happened with 40K to go. The most significant rider in there is EF Education's Nielsen Paulus there, and he's best young rider on this stage at this moment. So EF Education will drop their team back for him, and they will bring him back up to the front of the group. When the climb starts, 27 kilometers to go, Bora Hans grows on the front, and they got it strung out there leading into the climb. Matthew Vanderpool, though, will light things up, and he throws in a great attack. Julian Alaphilippe directly following it. Eddie Dunbar, domestique rider for Enos, is doing a great job this year. Every time I see Eddie, he's getting stronger, faster, better on all the mountains. Now he's got his race leader there, Carapaz, along for company. So Enos is set with two riders up in the front group. The only, the only team to get to up there behind Michael Woods. The Canadian is latched on, so he's ready to go for the big battle up this climb. Astana got one rider in there. I figured it was Jakob Folsing. Once they got a little more settled and the cameras could come on, I realized it's Omar Fraley. To my disbelief, Omar Fraley has no right to be in this move. Jakob Folsing isn't in the move, and later we'll see the camera pan back. Jakob Folsing is back there riding 100% trying to catch on to the Matthew Vanderpool led attack. Now, Omar Fraley, I don't know what he's doing. You see him look back. He can see his team leader there trying to chase and bring this group back. Omar Fraley still stays in the front group. Finally, Jakob Folsing will bring it back. Julian Alaphilippe will throw in a big hard attack just over the top of the climb. Come flying by the Kofidis rider Remy in the right turn and continue to go solo down the descent. This is blowing my mind away because it's a tactic we see often with Julian Alaphilippe, but he's got a chance at winning the race leader's yellow jersey if the, ra if the tactics are perfect, and it's not going to go that way for Julian Alaphilippe on today's stage. But behind, I want to talk about something that's going on because Enos is coming up with Rowan Dennis and Pavel Sivakov to do some work and bring back Julian Alaphilippe. Maury Van Savenov. My old teammate, Wim Van Savenot's son, is racing, and he's sitting second wheel, and he doesn't want to let the Enos riders in on the train, and he starts bumping with Rowan Dennis. This is an absolute no-no. Rowan Dennis bumps him back, flips his arm off at him, and I'm telling you right now, this is a big, big mistake. Now, one, two kilometers to go. Got a couple turns coming. Julian Alaphilippe's up the road. If Maury wants to go to the front and do something crazy, guys can forgive that. But this far out, 18 kilometers from the finish line on a straight road, to start bumping with Rowan Dennis, this is a mistake. Maury, you need to go home tonight when you're at the hotel and call your dad Wim because I know Wim's going to tell you what a knucklehead you are because I was teammates with Wim, and Wim had to ride the front most his career. He was always back there with Lotto, riding for Robbie McEwen, our team sprinter, so he knows what Rowan Dennis's job is at this moment. And Maury, you have no right to be up there bumping with the Enios train. That's a huge no-no. You're lucky you weren't taken to the curb. And my, it's gotten soft right now, the racing. You're not allowed to bump anyone, and that's what saves him. But in my day, you'd have just been taken to the curb for that particular knucklehead tactic. 
Enos will ride up. Pavel Sivakov will have a little chat again with Mari. And by then, Mari's figured out that he's in the wrong and gets out of the way. Enos is on the front, and they'll bring back Julian Alaphilippe, and they'll start riding some tempo. Problem is, there's attacks coming left and right all over the place, but Eddie Dunbar is in a fabulous move there with Woods. My old teammate Katana is up there, and he's stealing time bonuses. Eddie Dunbar will get some time bonuses too. This is a, this is a good setup for Enos because he's, other than Katana, he's the highest on GC up there, but he's got to worry about Woods too. So when I saw Eddie Dunbar pulling through at this moment, I was a little curious if it was a great tactic. When I look back at the results though, he's still ahead of Woods on GC. The kid is really climbing something special. So clearly he's a threat on GC if Enos needed to use him. So he's up at the front riding strong. That group would get brought back. And then with 10K to go, Ivan Cortinez, the Movistar rider, will just throw in a nice attack. And he's got a gap of about 18 seconds on the field. Behind, they're a little bit disorganized. But finally, bike exchange. Alpacine Phoenix get on the front and they're trying to pull him back. Total direct energy will throw in a guy. And they'll start having him back to about 5, 10 seconds, just under 5K to go with 500 meters to go, Cortinas is just now getting caught, and it's Mari Van Savenoff on the front doing the work to catch him. He has Julian Alaphilippe sitting second on his wheel, Matthew Vanderpool is third, and Michael Matthews is fourth. And Michael Matthews is a sprinter. This is in his wheelhouse. Today's stage has set up perfect for Michael Matthews to win this stage, but he's got one big problem. It's Matthew Vanderpool that's directly in front of him, and we all know how fast he is. But Michael Matthews has got the wheel, and he's going into the left, to the left turn in perfect position if he can hold that wheel. Here's the problem. Michael Matthews has lost the eye of the tiger, clearly. I don't know what happened, but he is making mistake after mistake after mistake. First one, about 500 meters, we start getting close to that turn. You're going to see Cortinas coming back on the right. That's a problem because now you got traffic coming there from Michael Matthews. Remember, Matthew Vanderpool is third wheel. Everybody wants Vanderpool's wheel. Nobody is thinking of Julian Alaphilippe. They're thinking Vanderpool is the wheel to have. So from behind, Michael Matthews needs to know that he's holding the golden egg position. At that moment, as soon as they start to slow for that left turn coming up around 400 meters to go, Michael Matthews needs to know that he has to accelerate. Now, I wasn't considered a sprinter, but I did sprints my whole career. And I can tell you 100% fact, as soon as that pace starts to drop, when you're on a rider who's been winning like Vanderpool has, you need to hold that wheel and you need to know everybody wants that wheel. So when the speed drops, you got to expect the acceleration from the back to come around, especially with a left turn coming up. They know they can take you off the wheel. What happens? Cortinez is coming back on the right through the two de Kunic quick Quickstep riders. Now you have Alexander Kemp, the Trek Sager Freighter rider, coming up the right side from behind on Michael Matthews and Christophe Laporte coming from the left behind Michael Matthews. And those two riders are going to come up and they're going to pinch Matthews off on the left corner. And that's going to cost him any chance of winning today's stage. They come into that corner. Christophe Laporte did a brilliant job of not even hafting the bump with Matthews to take him off the wheel because Matthews made such a big error. In the future, Michael Matthews, what you have to do is accelerate and take that inside turn you guys have to take the inside away so no one can pass you. Come up, come up behind the wheel of Vanderpool on the left side there so you have the inside corner and no one can pass you. Go out in the wind just for that quick second and then when the left turn comes, slot back on Matthew Vanderpool's wheel. Instead, he's not thinking right. He's lost the eye of the tiger. He gets passed both ways, pinched off. Christophe Laporte comes out in a fabulous spot on Vanderpool's wheel and then there's Cortina that's still in front of Michael Matthews when they come out of that turn. Now Michael Matthews has to punch it straight from the left and he'll get the wheel of Vanderpool again but the problem is is the sprint is just about ready to start. Julian Alaphilippe throws into the left. Vanderpool throws right to go up this right side next to the fencing. Matthews looks like he's in perfect position, but remember he's already been sprinting for 75 meters to get back onto the wheel. Now he's already coming off the wheel of Vanderpool as Julian Alaphilippe swings hard from the left all the way to the right. I still believe 
Matthews had a chance to just go ahead and go up the right side next to the fence, but he doesn't even bother trying because he knows there's no chance of winning the stage. Anyways, he just stops pedaling, coasting. I have the Tiger is gone and out of that boy. Julian Alaphilippe now is trying to hold on for second place on the stage. Nobody is going to stop Vanderpolf to take stage two win here at Tour de Suisse. Another exciting win. And there's a little bit more drama because we don't know who's going to get the race leader's jersey. Because just behind Vanderpool, Christophe Laporte came from the back, passed everyone to get second place time bonuses. Julian Alaphilippe, third place time bonuses. And race leader Stefan Kuhn, the FDJ rider, he's in the field. So there's a little bit of drama after the race on who's going to get today's jersey. Matthew Vanderpool gets the jersey. Uh, on today's stage, along with the sprint jersey, stage three, Vanderpool's win was amazing. His tactics were beautiful in that sprint. He never had to touch the win. This is the amazing thing when you're winning like he is because nobody fights you for that wheel. So Michael Matthews is getting fought for his wheel, but nobody has to fight Vanderpool for the wheel and he's on Julian Alaphilippe's wheel to begin with. And Julian Alaphilippe's a great lead out man to bring you up to the sprint so you can drop everyone. So Vanderpool, when you're winning like this and you're that impressive, it becomes easier in some ways because there is no fight because everybody wants your wheel, not the wheel in front of that rider. But Michael Matthews, he had a big fight back there and he lost it and just basically got slapped from everybody and wasted energy all the way to the line, finished fourth on today's stage, Never a chance at winning the stage. In my mind, Julian Alaphilippe, under these rules, probably should have been relegated to last place on the stage, but they don't because there was no accident. Michael Matthews let off the pedal and just started coasting instead of fighting for that wheel of Vanderpool to the finish. In the end, Vanderpool, great job, yellow jersey, and stage two. Hope you guys liked today's take on the butterfly effect. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon.